I received a message from a roaster asking how to roast the Tanzanian Robusta on the Ilio Bullet. And I thought, could be a good idea to just make a video out of it so that everybody gets this information. To explain you a bit my approach on roasting, I usually think about the coffee on what I want to achieve with the coffee, what are the characteristics of the bean, then I make a plan for the roast, I do a roast, then during the roast I stick to the plan so I don't change the roast during the roast, I don't react on the like ROR or whatever, I just do the roast and then after the roast I cup the coffee, I check if I like it or if there is anything that I could have done better. And if there is anything that I could have done better, then I'm having a look at the profile, at the curve, and then I think about what I can do better in the next time and then do the next roast accordingly. So the first thing I always think about is what I want to achieve at the end in my cup. And in this case, I want to have a classic espresso. Therefore, I'm not going to look for anything like uh, sweet, fruity, crisp, fresh, acidic, um, that's a completely different type of coffee. In this case, I'm going to look for a coffee that is round in its mouthfeel, that is full-bodied, um, that has a low acidity, that has some sweetness in it, so like a typical espresso profile. And therefore, I will make a little bit a longer roast. So I will extend the whole roast a little bit. One, one thing that I will do in this, in this particular case is um, there is this so-called Maillard phase, or there is this phase between the drying point and the first crack. And I will make this phase a little bit longer. I will take the power down a little bit during this phase. Not too much, because I don't want to bake the coffee. I still want to have a quite fast roast, but just a little bit longer than, for example, for a filter roast, where I just go full power until more or less until first crack. So I take the power there a little bit. And the coffee is going to be quite exothermic, so before first crack I'm going to take down the power also a little bit. And then when it comes to the, when it comes to the roast development time percentage, so the time from first crack to the end of the roast, divided to the whole time of the roast, I tend to stick to this about 20%. So if I have, for example, a very clear filter roast, I go down to maybe something like 16, 17%. If I have an espresso roast, I can go up to 23, 24%, something like that. But I'm always more or less in this range around 20% um, roast development time percentage. One thing I'm looking at when I roast the coffee is how dense the coffee is. I have a density meter for that, but you can do it just if you have a standardized cup and then you always put in the amount of beans and measure how much beans you have inside. That's a very simple procedure, but like that you find out if the coffee is a bit harder or a bit softer. This coffee is quite soft and therefore I'm not going to be too aggressive, especially with the preheating temperature. With the Ilio Bullet, a range that has um, a range of preheating temperature that is working really well is something between 220 and 280 degrees Celsius. I know some roasters are even going a bit higher um, I don't know anybody that is going a bit lower, but so the range between 220 and 280 is a range that is working really well for, for most of the coffees. With this coffee, since it has quite a low density, I go a bit on the lower side of this range. But since we're going to roast 600 grams, so not really a small amount or so like of a mid amount, I go... I don't go down too low, so I will go to around 250 degrees um, preheating temperature. In general, my roasting profiles, they're getting the longer, the more simple. So I try not to make too many changes in a, in a roast. One thing that I always keep the same with the Alio Bullet is the drum speed. So I always keep it on drum speed 9. You can influence the coffee by changing the drum speed that's on one hand quite complex, and then on the other hand, the more factors you're changing in the roast, the more difficult it gets to control the roast. So you will be doing quite well by sticking to one drum temperature and then keep your main focus on the power settings. You can play a little bit with the fan settings. Some roasters even keep the fan settings the same for the whole roast. I'm going to do some changes here. I'm going to explain you why, but you could also stick to really like one fan speed one drum speed and then only work with the power setting 
you will get quite far in your roast profile development. So my plan for this roast is, is uh, 250 degrees preheating temperature. And then I go to fan speed four. I will stick to fan speed four, which is adding on convection in the roast. I will stick, as I said, to drum speed nine. And in the first part of the roast, I'm going to give the coffee full power. So I'm going to work with setting power nine in the first part of the roast. Then somewhere around 180 degrees IBTS, I will go down with the burner a little bit to stretch this Maillard phase in order to bring in a little bit more sweetness. And I will go down there on power settings uh, around seven, so about two steps down. Not too much because I don't want to bake the coffee, but enough to stretch it a little bit. With most of the coffees, first crack is around 200 degrees IBTS. With the Caniferas, I often experience they're a little bit higher, so somewhere around 205 degrees IBTS, where the first crack is then um, starting. So I will, a little bit ahead of first crack, go down with the burner a bit more, because on one hand, the coffee is then getting exothermic around first crack. And I want to really keep control on the roast development time phase. And as I said, I want to stretch the roast development time phase a little bit. Therefore, I'm going then down on the burner setting a little bit before um, first crack is coming. Also, for the same reason, I'm going to set the fan speed a little bit higher. Um, if I'm going higher than um, fan four with the fan speed, then I usually take out heat of the system. But then here, shortly before I end the roast, I'm, I will step back with the power even a little bit more in order to stretch the roast development time a little bit more. And what I'm going to do in this case is quickly before I end the roast, I will increase the fan settings to fan number nine. And this solely has the reason that I want to take out the chuffs of the system. So let's create a recipe now. I'll give you the name like. Um, we can, if we want to, we don't have to, we can add some information on the profile. Uh, we do a 600 gram roast. So the first thing we are doing is setting the preheat. So we said we do a preheat temperature of 250 degrees. Power at the beginning, we will go on setting nine. Fan, we will use number four, drum speed number nine. And then we add some steps. So what we are doing is around 180 degrees IBTS. We will take the power a little bit down to step seven. Then before the first crack, so around 200 degrees, we will take the power down as well to stretch the roast development phase. And we will also put up the fan on speed six. One thing is also we take out heat of the system and prolong the development time, but we are also taking smoke out of the system. Then we let the roast continue until IBTS 210, where we will go down with the power quite low to setting two. And then shortly before we finish the roast, so at let's say 212 IBTS, we will put the fan on the highest fan speed in order to bring out the chuffs from the system. And then uh, at 213, we will give us a end roast alert. That's it. So the recipe is now ready. We save it. I think we're ready now to start the roast. One thing to remind you, when you do the preheating, you don't wait until the IBTS has reached the preheating temperature, but you wait until the machine is giving you the charge sign. This has the reason that the machine is reaching the um, IBTS pre temperature quite quickly, but it's measuring at the same time with the beam probe how stable the machine is. And um, usually that can take about 20 minutes in the first roast, 
sometimes even 25 if you're in cold conditions, until the whole system is heated up and is stable. Therefore, wait until the charge sign is showing up. That's the point where the machine is then really ready to roast. And another thing, since I'm here in a room where I have no possibility to bring out the smoke, I will put my Airmex soldering smoke filter system on the machine to get rid of the most amount of smoke here. And we can start the roast. Yesterday, we have roasted together a coffee from Tanzania. It was a Robusta from Tanzania. Now let's have a look at the coffee. If I'm looking at the picture of the beans, I'm quite happy. It has this uh, chocolate color. It's a full city, full city plus roast. Um, we didn't go into second crack, but we just reached um, around the beginning of second crack with the coffee. If we have a look at the roast, I'm quite happy with how it went. It was more or less um, according to my plan. You see, we started with quite a lot of power, P9, and then we extended the roast here with the setting of P7 and then P4. We reached around 10 minutes 49 in the roast. You see here, by the way, the effect of putting the fan on setting nine. You see how here on 212 degrees, we set the fan high, so it had a little peak, and then it completely dropped. So this setting of the fan completely takes out the heat of the system. The only thing where I'm not 100% happy when looking at the curve, although still it's very 
theoretic because we haven't cupped the coffee yet, but I was planning for a longer roast development time percentage. We have reached 19% at the end. I have plans to reach around 23%, so roast should have gone around 20 seconds later, something like that. So what probably next time I would do, I take out this F9 from the programming and I just wait with the roast a little bit longer until about the first sign of second cracks. That's actually the point where I like to take out my espresso and we didn't reach that perfectly. So I would wait a couple of second times until we then hear the first, the first crisps of the second crack. And at that point, then I would set up the fan to take out the chuffs and then end the roast after a couple of seconds. But as said, that's all theory. The most important thing is now how the coffee is tasting. All in all, I'm really happy with the coffee, how it is. It has this nice mouthfeel, it is balanced, it has sweetness in it. Before we were talking about the roast level, but now when I cup the coffee, I would say I'm really happy with this roast level. It doesn't have to be darker. You can roast it darker if you like roasty flavors or more bitterness, but the coffee now has hardly any roasty flavors. It has no bitterness. There is no acidity in this coffee that has to be roasted out. So the point where you roast it do is, in my opinion, very nice. Therefore, I can recommend you to roast with this recipe that we used. I would be really curious about your experiences. Why don't you do the roast the same way and then tell me about your experience? Therefore, I'm really happy if you give me feedback in the comments. I hope this video was fun to watch and it was helpful for you. If you want to know more about coffee roasting, then come to our website, roasttravels.com. We have a lot of information on roasting, but we have also equipment like coffee roasting machines, color meters, books, and many more. In addition to that, a really nice selection of green coffee beans from all over the world. You find a link to our website right here. You could also look through our YouTube channels. We have a lot of videos on coffee roasting, on equipment, but also very inspirational interviews with coffee roasters, coffee traders, and many more. If you have any questions left, then always come back to me. I'm Ingo from Rose Travels and I look forward to talking to you.